The legislative session has reached its end point, with Florida's CPU barely still intact after the countless Craven Digital cookies uploaded by this loathsome legislature. Thanks to the brave work of the intrepid digital democracy defenders that are the Working Families Lobby Corps, the working people of Florida will continue the fight both online and IRL. Welcome to the final edition of the Florida AFL-CIO Legislative Update. And now, Miss Zhang, you will witness firsthand the power that you spurned. Throughout the legislative session, our right to vote has been under the tenuous threat of termination by Senate Bill 90. SB 90 would make the voting process purposefully difficult in a brazen attempt to discourage the citizens of Florida from making their voices heard. Since voting is a right, why would we as a state attempt to reduce the right of a person to exercise their right to vote and in the manner in which they decide to vote? We may not have to take a test, count bubbles or marbles or any other such nonsense, but this bill is tantamount to the same thing. This bill will make it harder, not easier, for legitimately registered voters to exercise their constitutional rights to participate in our representative democracy. Seniors, minority groups, including those of the Latino community and residents who have physical disabilities will find more barriers to casting their vote and less opportunities to participate in the election process. Like many of you, I asked for and listened to several of the supervisors of elections in my district, and each of them shared their concerns about this bill and how it will make it harder for them to do their jobs for absolutely no reason. Frankly, our own governor went on national TV and celebrated what a great election cycle we had and no issues in Florida. So what are we trying to fix? History has its eyes on us. And with that, I rise in opposition of this legislation. I rise in opposition of deflating and defending the opportunities for people to have the right of free speech, the right to have their voices heard. But I rise so that somebody else we have the ability to rise in this chamber where a lot of us used to not be able to. But we've spent a lot of time on election law and we wonder why when everything went so well. Why are we fixing a system that is not broken? We can't help but be cynical. For the first time, the Democrats outvoted the Republicans in vote by mail ballots. Senate Bill 90 was heard consistently throughout the final days of the legislative session. I think we've got to be making our, our laws with all respect to the bill sponsor based on the evidence and not suspicion. Vote. This bill does nothing to actually boost the integrity of the election system, but instead limits and restricts the right to vote by mail. That because it's the last week of session, and we're talking about another terrible elections bill. And I feel like it's deja vu all over again and again and again. And I think that one of the reasons why we're discussing a bill that's even worse than the one last year is because the public is not allowed in this building and they don't get to have their voices heard in person. Despite heroic attempts by civil minded senators and representatives, the bill was passed on Thursday in the House 77 to 40. Game over! System breach. Oh. Firewall one. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers. A remote access tool. We're being hacked. By Locksat? I don't know. But we've been so careful. How could they find us? They haven't found us yet. Just cracked the outer layer of our system. I'll start an intrusion inspection and find out who our rat is. Florida's local governments must now contend with a disastrous deletion of their county and city sovereignty. 
House Bill 53 and its Senate counterpart, SB 1076, which it was substituted for, will hijack the bandwidth of local governments to have a say in large construction projects and transfer that power to the state. I'm getting, I'm getting calls from literally hundreds of contractors saying that without the ability of local government to give some type of preferences like the ones that this bill seeks to um, preempt, they're not going to be able to get any business. And one of the reasons the local municipalities do this is because they know that. They know that. So this is not designed to help small businesses. It's not designed to help minority businesses. This bill is not designed to help women business. This bill is designed to continue to exclude them from any opportunity to participate. This bill will preempt qualifications like local hiring preferences and make it harder for small businesses and local vendors to compete with the larger out-of-state or even international contractors. HB 53 passed the House 78 to 36 and the Senate 79 to 34. The bill will now head to the governor's desk, a grim portent for local government's right to home rule. The security of our local governments continue to be breached as House Bill 735, which would significantly alter the licensing programs of local counties and cities, passed the House 82 to 32 and the Senate 22 to 18. I just think we ought to let the communities control their own destiny, their own way of making sure that their citizenry is protected to the extent they can be. I'm going to say this is a bad bill and I'm going to vote against it again. Sark, all my functions are now yours. Take them. The bill will now be sent to the governor to be signed into law. No use can't help you now, my little program. But now I think I can safely say that your time and money have been well spent. We're about to witness the greatest miracle of the machine age. Based on the revolutionary Computonian law of probability, this machine will tell us the precise location of the three remaining golden tickets. It says, I won't tell, that would be cheating. Florida's university and college presidents are some of the most powerful unelected public officials in the state. House Bill 997 and its Senate counterpart, SB 220, would have moved the selection process for these influential institution leaders into the dark and out of the sunshine. As we have received emails and communications from the very faculty and administrators who we are purporting to protect with this legislation, they keep telling us over and over and again, it's not a problem. We are not being deterred from applying. In fact, sometimes the knowledge that we're seeking another position helps us gain maybe an advancement in our current institution. The flip side of this is, under this 21-day provision, until you get to that final list, all the other applicants are going to be hidden in secret. The process by the headhunters, the search committees, all that will be done in secret. So we will never know whether candidates with greater expertise or experience were, were bypassed by people with greater political connections. House Bill 997 was substituted for Senate Bill 220, but thanks to the cyber advocacy of Florida's working people who entered the digital fray to make calls, send emails, and communicate via social media, the bill was defeated in the Senate 14 to 25, with the vote falling short of the two-thirds required for an exemption to Florida's records laws.
This wasn't the only victory for Florida's working people. Attempts to defrag and divide Florida's frontline workers by minimizing their right to organize failed, thanks in part to the combined efforts of Florida's working people's virtual vigilance. Senate Bill 78, HB 947, Senate Bill 1014, House Bill 835. Florida's pension system is secured and protected as well with the failure of Senate Bill 84. The challenges remain and we're pressing continue despite reaching the final level of this legislative session. Hello, my name is Andrew Rangolan, I'm Vice President of Transport Workers Union Local 570. The 2021 legislative session was like none I've ever seen before. I participated with the Florida AFL-CIO Working Family Lobby Corps because we must hold our elected leaders accountable and educate them on the issues. During the legislative session, I have utilized the following tools to communicate with elected leaders. I've made phone calls, I've sent emails, I've sent letters and utilized the social media platform. We cannot be silent and working with our union affiliates creates unity to echo our presence. I encourage my brothers and sisters to please stand with us and participate with the Florida AFL-CIO Lobby Corps. Solidarity forever. Solidarity. The legislative session has powered off, but the fight continues. Visit www.flaflcio.org to stay connected and empowered until the next legislative session when we take to cyberspace yet again to continue to advocate against the legislature's atrocious authoritarianism. See you on the Information Superhighway.